Welcome to the Grace Story Podcast, where inspiring stories are brought to life. This podcast is made possible by Grace College and Seminary, located on the shores of Winona Lake in the great state of Indiana. I'm your host, Dr. Drew Flam. This is the Grace Story Podcast. Today on the podcast, we have Andrew Palladino. You might recognize that name as he's one of our co-producers here on the podcast. He's stepping now into the hot seat because he recently accepted a position as new head coach of the eSports program at Grace. He also works at Grace as a photographer and videographer. Before that, he was a freelance cinematographer in the Grand Rapids area where he graduated from Cornerstone University in 2016. While in college, Andrew competed in eSports tournaments and has nine years of experience playing League of Legends. If you're thinking that sounds like he spent a lot of time in his mom's basement, that's what I thought too. But as you'll hear, there's a whole lot more to the world of esports than most realize. Andrew has been ranked in the top 8% in North America in League of Legends. Welcome, Coach Palladino. Yes, thank you for having me. Have you gotten used to that name yet, (laughs) Coach Palladino? You know, not really. (laughs) Uh, people, People have said it a lot more than I expected them to, but yeah, I'm sure I'll get used to it. Well, it's exciting to have this new program at Grace, and I will have to admit up front, my knowledge of esports and video games in general Hmm. is close to negligible. So you will be the one educating us today. So let's talk first about like, how did you get into the whole gaming thing yourself? Yeah. So I think a lot of people you see that are pretty passionate about it. It started from a pretty young age, right? I remember getting like a Nintendo 64 for Christmas in I played a lot with my two brothers, Uh, so I remember pulling that out, getting all excited and playing that, so yeah, it's always been a part of my relationship with my brothers and uh, friends throughout, so, you know, started at the N64, and we also had like a Super Nintendo and stuff like that, so most of the retro games was part of that era still, (laughs) but yeah, then, yeah, um, grew to more competitive ones. Yeah. Now you you aren't just uh, an esports guy, you know, in the basement, whatever people might picture. Uh, you've played other sports as well, so talk mm-hmm. about kind of um, your other athletic endeavors and sort of compare and contrast esports with other competitive sports you've been a part of. Right. Yeah. So I played quite a few sports growing up. Did like wrestling for a little bit. Did uh, track, but mostly I did soccer. You know, I played club soccer year round and then did it in high school and even some club division things in like college. So, um, yeah, really enjoy soccer, really love competing in that way. And then, yeah, now it's on to esports. <laughs> How are they similar or different? So it's a pretty big, uh, conversation that people have about whether or not esports is actually a sport. Um, I honestly don't really care if you call it a sport or not. Um, I know the word esports can be like a little bit deceiving, but basically, you know, it's treated a lot like a sport besides the physical aspects. Obviously, you're not getting a lot of exercise while you're doing it. But um, same thing goes with like teamwork, uh, practices, um, all sorts of things like looking at your play and how it can be better and things like that. So. I'd say it's very similar in most ways. You know, most of the um, lifelong lessons you learn from from sports about, you know, hard work and critical thinking and teamwork, it is, implies to esports as well. I remember when I first met you, I asked you what your favorite sports team was, and you mentioned some team that I had never heard of, and I said, mm-hmm. like, what do they do? <laughs> and you said, "Oh, they they're an esports team." Yeah. So you know, I I was like, "Wait, there's teams," and and you know, I think more of us now are becoming knowledgeable about just. I mean, at the pro level, it's it's yeah. it's a thing. Um. So, like, what is esports at like the highest level? Well, I mean, it totally makes sense. I know there's a lot of people that have a lot of questions about it because it's really exploded over the past five years. Right. I I graduated college in 2016, and when I played, you know, tournament, you know, the couple tournaments I did in college, it was mostly just, like, your friends that you play with normally. It's not – it wasn't nearly as structured as, like, it is today. Um, So, Yeah. So, I mean, pro sports teams, I mean, like, do we have – 
a pro sports team in locations? How does it how does it yeah. even work at you know, let's take League of Legends since that's the game you know best. Yeah. Like what's the pro level of that sport? Yeah, so most of them are actually based out of California. Um they franchised the league, um, I don't know, a couple of years ago, a year or two ago, and that was a really big thing, um, meaning that like teams can't, you know, drop out of the division, right? They're supported by League of Legends as a sponsor team, hmm. as as franchised in in the uh, league. So um, that's really important for the sport to help it grow, to help investors get involved, and that was a turning point when you see like actual, you know sports teams like professional sports teams get involved like the golden state warriors uh purchase a team that's Uh. called the golden guardians so they own a team and they're not you know not the only ones there are other like professional teams that are getting involved with like the esports and having an an esports team so do they just play virtually or i mean do they get together physically Mm -hmm. um to play against one another you know home and away and as we think of maybe in typical professional sports like what does that look like yeah so i mean it just it depends on where you're playing right north america has a server the north american uh seasons there's a spring and a summer season or split as they're called um and they're played in a studio in california which is where the teams practice and are located. Not all of the teams are like based out of that. Like Cleveland has a team, hmm. um, but they they're the team is actually in California. Um, besides that, I mean, you have right. It's a global thing. You have Chinese servers, Korean servers are really big. European like European servers. Um, so the the general North American team plays in California, but there's also uh, they're always together when they're playing, which is in California. In America, but uh, when you look at like tournaments, like the World Championship and things like that, then that usually changes. Different, yeah, international tournaments move. So the last one was in Europe somewhere, the World Championship. So it's like, yeah, like, and then part of it is because of the explosive growth, right? It's yeah. like they're sort of figuring it out as they go. Absolutely, because you just have who knows how many people. Like, give us an idea how many people play. League of Legends on a regular basis. Any idea? I mean, are we talking like how many like people play? Hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I can't tell you off the top of my head how many people play it, but I do know that the uh, hundred million people watched the World Championship. A hundred million people yeah. watched the World Championship. Yep, and f- it was forty million concurrent viewers. So at once, there was forty million people. Wow. Watching. Which, or, or devices. That's amazing. Say, yeah. Or devices. Okay, because some people would ro- watch it on multiple devices. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it can be. It can be a little bit deceiving. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely up there. Which, how much of that in North America? How much is that is in China? China is huge, and Korea is huge for esports. Okay, you have all of Europe. You know, that you see the numbers compared a lot to like the NBA finals and stuff like that. The truth is. The majority of it happens in China and Korea, and not to say it's not big here. Um, North America is interesting because we have less players than other uh, regions, but we have all of the money. (laughs) So all the teams' salaries, like player salaries, are all more here than they are. Okay. Um, Yeah. All right, so let's get down to the collegiate level because that's sure. what we're talking about here at Grace College. So what does eSports look like at the collegiate level? Right, yeah. So we're going to be um, offering scholarships for players to come and play um, on a, a varsity team. So we're currently talking with NACE, which is the National Association of Collegiate eSports, um, and we meet all of the criteria for a varsity team as long as we can get you know, enough players for our team. What's so five. Enough, you need five we need, players? We need five players, okay. and we can claim that we're varsity status, basically. Okay. Um, so the division of NACE is all in the same division. So we're going to be playing against IU, all the D1 schools. Uh, you know, the whole range is all in the same division. Gotcha. So we would play in the, the same division as that. But um, as far as what the program would look like, it'd be, you know, it's not you're just – it's not like you're just coming to play video games. It's structured practices, you know, to find out how to improve, prove your personal skill and also your skill as a team. Um, League of Legends is a 5v5 game, and it takes uh, a lot of teamwork. 
um, you can take players that are extremely skilled on their own, and if they don't have any sort of team or, or team cohesion, then they will probably lose with a team that's a lot less skilled and a lot more making decisions together. So okay, so you have practice, and you know, at practice, are you running drills? Are you just playing? Like, mm-hmm. what is what is like a an esports team practice look like? Right. So I guess maybe I should just go over like the basics of League of Legends a sure. little bit. So to like kind of give it context. So yeah, it's a 5v5 game where there's like 140 characters that you can choose from. And um, each character obviously has a different role in the game. And so um, after you choose your character, you go in and you try to destroy the other team's base. And it takes about 20 to 30 minutes usually. Um So it's not as straightforward as just going and killing their base. You have to destroy towers. You have to obviously, you know, kill the other team uh, to do these things. Um, So basically, the more more resources you can get, the the better your character is, and the easier it is to win. Okay. Um, So with that being said, there's a a whole map, and there's a lot of strategies involved with how to get more resources to win. A lot of that is killing players. A lot of it is finding objectives on the map to take, you know, destroying towers and a lot of sort of those things. So, yeah, you definitely review your game. Um, You watch it back afterwards and see what you could have done individually and also what you could do as a team. Like, let's say that there is an objective on the map that we need to take. We know it's going to, like, come up on the map at, like, 15 minutes into the game, right? We need to make sure that our team is set and ready to be at that objective and uh, have a plan for taking that certain objective so we can like you know use that to create an advantage for the rest of the game so we can look and see you know all right this player even though he was doing something good at the top of the map right the other side of the map um at this time it's not necessarily helpful to the team because the whole team lost a really big objective so it a lot of it can be compared to like chess I guess or a lot of strategy games in that in that like macro sense of Mm. like there's big strategy you're always trying to outthink your opponent you know a few steps ahead of the game okay Um, then there's also like very fast reaction sort of things like milliseconds matter when you're in a fight right so you have to have that sort of skill you know it's like the it's like the uh, fancy footwork of you know video games so uh, we, you know, this is falling underneath our athletic department. Mm-hmm. Um, we're one of a number of schools in the Crossroads League who either has or is getting um, esports. So it, our league is looking at this at a ho- as a whole, right? Um, and our our Crossroads Leagues has has always been faith based institutions that right. you know uh, partially why we're together is be because we have some commonality there. Mm-hmm. Um, so talk to me a little bit about like the faith aspect of esports how, how do you right. integrate like um faith our christian walk into the perspective of esports and, and then right. even into how you plan to conduct your team right yeah so i think that um as christians in the church we have a big responsibility to redeem things that christ has put into this world um i think back to when i was in high school i used to listen to kind of post-hardcore music you know a little bit of screaming in that sort of genre, which a lot of people viewed as a very like angry sort of genre, which uh, was true to some degree. Um, there were actually a lot of like Christian bands and Christian guys in these in these hardcore bands. Um, in this particular example, I remember going to a concert. Um, the headlining was a band that I knew, a Christian band. Excited to see them. Right when we got there, one of the first bands, the guy was saying very hateful things he was cussing at the crowd at one point he even like said like he hated the whole world and he hoped the world hated him and he told the whole like audience to like flip him off right and i'm like okay why are we here you know i don't really want to be here um then they get off the stage the headlining band comes on and the guy says you know um he says i know there's been like a lot of hatred tonight and i just want you guys to know that like God doesn't hate you. God loves you. That's why he sent his son. And like, that was like really powerful to me and me like understanding like, yeah, we need to be in these spaces as Christians to like redeem them. Right. So 
I always think back to that moment of like, yeah, as Christians, we could have just let that space be its own, right? And we could let there be hate and um, Satan really take a hold of those things, or we can, as Christians, like go in and redeem that. So that being said, um, esports is one of those things that I think can be looked at and think it's a waste of time. Video games are a waste of time. But really, we as Christians in the church need to figure out how to get involved in that because truth is, it's not going anywhere. It's just getting bigger, right? Like a hundred million million people yeah. watching the Super Bowl of esports. Right. There's a lot of people involved. I mean, there's other statistics, right, that you can think of as well. Like the average gamer is like a 35 year old male with a like full time job, right? So this isn't just like a fad. It's not just something that's of youth. It's something that started, you know, in my generation, maybe a little bit before, but a lot of people that are really passionate about it are still are and still play and they um, include their families in that and things like that. So definitely we need to step into that as Christians and learn, learn how we can redeem that. Um, the video game community can be pretty toxic at times, right? If you're online with people you don't know, doing a competitive thing (laughs) so like it's pretty easy to like blame them you know obviously that's a little bit different than the environment we're going to be in because it's a a team environment right so I want to take that and I want to transform that and like put Christ in that and and understand that like we have a responsibility as a church to be involved in that so that's why I think it's really great that Grace is getting involved with that and we're um we're going that direction and really getting Christ into that. You even so. think about it, right? Like just the name of our institution. Yeah. Um, grace. Mm-hmm. And, and we talk often about wanting to live up to our name. Right. Um, both in recognizing our need for grace and then showing grace and mercy to the world. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm guessing there aren't a lot of sp- esports teams out there. Um, called grace Mm. um uh and that even of itself will be the opportunity to live up to the name yeah Mm -hmm. um so you know what are you looking for you know you just started like a week ago as coach (laughs) yep so what uh, what happens between now and next fall when you hope to have five people on your team yep so we're actually giving out 10 scholarships currently so we're looking to get 10 people um on the scholarship level um so starting, yeah, getting recruited a team, right? Um, and we're planning on having a team ready by uh, August or the next school year, right? Um, the NACE, which is the association I mentioned before, the uh, division we're going to be part of, the, they have uh, like a season for the games that you play. Um, League of Legends season starts in January. So we'll be on track to kind of develop the team over the first semester look for tournaments and things like that, look for other schools to scrimmage against and play um, and things like that. Then the actual season will start in uh, January. And you'll be holding uh, practices and games, not here on campus, but at a local esports arena, correct? Yep, that's correct. Yeah, it's um, over on Detroit Street. Yep, they've got a bunch of uh, gaming systems over there. Um, And yeah, it should... Should be good for what we're doing for now, at least. Awesome. So. And when you play against another team, do you uh, get into the same physical location for those matches? It depends. Most of the time, probably not, at, le- at least at the collegiate level. At the pro level, they always do. Uh, I've never seen a match where they're not actually together. But A lot of that's uh, entertainment value and a lot of people yeah. watching and all yeah, that absolutely. kind of stuff. Yeah. But yeah, that was one thing we talked when we were talking to the director of NACE. He said that most teams travel about one to two times per year, but it is becoming more popular, which I think is great, right? You take something that people view as an antisocial thing, uh, technology and video games and social media. But if, I mean, if we create a community where, you know, if kids are going to play video games, right? Like, why not create valuable lessons out of that and create a social context where they can develop friendships and relationships? So, um, Hopefully, we can get more events where, you know, host tournaments where people are coming here, coming to Grace, viewing, like, what the community here is like, and also going to other communities and, you know, making relationships through that. 
but yeah, most of the, most of the um, matches are online for awesome. now at least. Um, so uh, people interested in, you know, their grandchild or themselves um, mm-hmm. talking to you more about this, what, what's the best way to find you? Best way to find me would probably be to email me. I'm just esports at grace.edu. Um, there's also um, a questionnaire on the um, Grace Lancers website. So you can go on there and you can fill out your information and it'll come directly to me. So I'll, I'll see, you know, your information and what you're interested in, things like that. So. Cool. Anything mm-hmm. else we should know about esports? <sighs> Anything else you should know? Um,. I don't know. I think I think that sums up a lot of it. We covered it. Yeah, I think so. Well, thank you for uh, stepping into this new arena, literally and figuratively, mm-hmm. for us at Grace. And as you mentioned, redeeming something that um, we can use uh, to hopefully make the name of Christ known. Um, and so, thank you for for doing that and having the right perspective on it. Yeah, thank you. I know it's a big step for Grace to do it, and I'm appreciative of everyone that was involved in the decision, and I think it's great that Grace is getting involved. So, And thank you for listening to this version of the eSports podcast on the Grace Story podcast. Thanks to our co-producers, Rick Neer and Andrew. You ended up still producing this as yes. well. Um, so thank you to you as well. Thank you to Dr. Wally Brath, worship arts professor here at Grace, for providing the music. And as always, if you could like, comment, and rate this wherever you found it, we would be so grateful. And we hope you live your best grace story today.